Hello and welcome back to XCOM. I'm Jade Star. I'm Guava Moment. And today is a very special day. We don't have Archer Hours, how special could it be? Well, there's a very special event that likes to happen in the middle of the second month of every game. Oh. Yes. Looks like they've changed their tactics. But why? Why do this? It's a message to the entire world that nothing can stop them. Hooray, terror mission! The thing is, all of this gets covered up by uh, XCOM at the end of the game. So no one knows there was an alien invasion. Right? No, that's the Bureau. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I I'm pretty sure we can't cover up the fact that we're being like... Did you see some of the stuff in the Bureau that gets covered up? Yeah, okay, good point. Well, you're just gonna have to wait until Silent J has something to s I mean, Silent W. <laughs> Whoops. I combined, uh, what is it, Silent Bob <laughs> and Jay. Yeah. So we're not taking Urban Sprawl anymore? Uh, we, actually, I think we are. I was just checking through all of my soldiers. I was kind of hoping I had, um, either a rookie to take along, and I thought that would be a really bad idea. I want to promote somebody else to Assault, so that I have a backup for Sprawl. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, was, I was about to comment on two heavies, but I think for this mission that is a good choice. It's not only two heavies, it's two of the best aimed soldiers I have. But you'll be doing a lot of shooting at medium range-ish. Yes. And you'll want to do a lot of damage, so yeah, two heavies is a good choice. And two rockets. Two extra rockets, yes. Touching down. Australia has sent a number of requests for assistance, so that's our next drop site. We've gotten reports of alien activity taking place in a densely populated urban center. We should move to secure the area and minimize further civilian casualties. I like how calm Bradford is about this. What's our urban combat badge actually named? Uh, I believe that's the Taco Defender's badge? Taco Defender. Okay. Yeah. So we should be getting one of those. I don't even know what the uh, Central, this is Big Sky. criteria is for getting one of those. I mean, it would seem like city missions, but that's such a common occurrence, I can't possibly be it. Given the green light. Your highest priority is to protect those civilians. Well, no, I think it is. Really? Because hmm. you get less and less city missions as time progresses. I suppose. Right, so, terror missions. Up in the top right-hand corner, we have our civilians alive, civilians saved, and civilians dead counter. Feel free to completely ignore those numbers when you are playing yourself. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, if you can save a lot of civilians, by all means do it. It leads to good things. It is not necessary. Yeah, if all the civilians die, I mean, it's not the... Well, if literally all of them die, that is kind of bad, but yes. you can... Without even trying, you're going to save a couple. Yeah, it's pretty hard to have all the aliens murder all the civilians before you murder all the aliens. You'll usually save at least a handful just by default like that. And there's usually one or two right in the uh, front that you can rescue, but yeah. never never risk your guys to save a civilian. Pretty much. In fact, uh, it's, it's kind of the other way around. You know, you can use civilians as decoys or bait to prevent something from shooting oh, yeah. or hurting one of your soldiers. Definitely. Yeah. Much rather having the aliens shoot at civilians instead of your guys. There's a good flank there. Yeah. Love assaults. Yeah, they're useful, especially when they have good aim and can actually make medium-range shotgun shots. Heavies, they do that a lot. Yeah. 
the the one upside to saving a lot, lot of civilians on terror missions is that we'll actually uh, influence uh, continent yeah. panic. If you save a ton of them, it will actually not only decrease panic in the country that is heading the terror mission, but you might remove one panic from all of the other countries in the continent. And I think conversely, if literally everyone dies, then uh, their panic increases regardless of if you win the mission or not. I'm pretty sure if everyone dies, the country just says fuck you and pulls it out. It might be it might be that. I, I obviously haven't let it happen, because <laughs> yeah. I'm awesome. But... Uh, <laughs> I, I just knew that it was a bad thing to have that happen. I remember reading it somewhere. This is a mission where I kind of expect my soldiers to have a, a skill or two more than they actually do. So right there I was looking at sprawl skills and going, crap, no lightning reflexes to deal with that floater's overwatch shot. Well, the rocket's a good strategy. I was thinking about it, but there are definitely other things that are more rocket worthy than a single floater in high cover on this map. Uh, especially when uh, Nithian Stumparum has a 71% shot. Target's still up. Not always a guarantee, though. If only there was friendly fire. <laughs> that shot almost hit that civilian. <laughs> if there was friendly fire, last time James Dean would have perforated Gunderson. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, just floaters here? Just floaters for the moment. That's all we gotta worry about? I don't know. Already used up, um... Running on the first turn, so I didn't have a whole a lot of uh, ideas for Sprawl, especially since she doesn't have lightning reflexes. And then the heavies are slightly far enough away that they didn't get line of sight on this guy until he moves. Ooh. Yeah, I was really surprised good. that uh, Sprawl landed that. Heavies doing what heavies do? Yeah. Spray bullets in the vicinity of a target. Yeah. Oh, and floaters doing what they do, which is just awful moves. Oh, really? That missed? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that missed. I was really kind of surprised, like, what the hell did this floater think he was doing? Yes. Ooh, this is... Okay, so uh, we can talk the rest of the video about this. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Uh, just discovered them. They're, they're a little bit close, aren't they? <laughs> That's... that's unfortunate. Okay, so Chris Lids... Honestly, not as deadly as I, they were in the original game. Yeah, not so bad. But uh, this is, yeah, how you deal with them. Here's me thinking James Dean had, um... Bullet Swarm. So, he had one round loaded, two actions. I fired, and then tapped reload. <laughs> and I made Nitian reload her so sniper. Made sniper reload, and he still has an empty gun. Yeah. And you're being swarmed by Chris Lids and floaters. Yeah. Um, not the best of situations. So I know in the original XCOM, everyone has that one mission where they, they go in and then nothing but zombies and chrysalids remain <laughs> of their units. This this just isn't a thing. I don't, I don't, like in the original game, I never got the fear of chrysalids that I know some people had, but I, I don't get any fear from chrysalids in this game. It's like, okay, well, shoot them when they get close. They can be really devastating if you reveal them at really close range. Like, this was pretty much as bad of a reveal as I could get. This is the- oh god, and that doesn't help. Yeah, no, leaving it alive with one health definitely does not help. Uh, later on in the game when you have plasma sniper rifles and in the zone, then you can deal with, like, <laughs> chrysalids until your gun is empty. Yeah, pretty much. But, uh, this- this is one of the worst situations I've ever seen someone be with chrysalids. Yeah, they, you uh... better hope that one goes feeding on that, uh, civilian. Yeah, like that, I said, remember guy. the, uh, whole use civilians to go. save your, uh, your soldiers things? Yep. So I assume you all know this by now, but now that civilian is going to come back as a zombie and attack you. And if you don't kill that zombie in time, it becomes another chrysalid. Zombies also have a fair bit of health at 10, and they can actually do a lot of damage in melee. A lot of damage if they get close, but they're very, very slow. They are very slow. Um, this might be a case where Jade Star might just want to hunker down in this mission and let wave after wave of civilians that have been turned into zombies come at him. I know in Impossible there sometimes I've had to do that. Right. But the way that works is, uh, mechanically, in Classic... A civilian that dies to a chrysalid off-camera only has a 50% chance of coming back as a zombie. Uh, in Impossible, that's a 100% chance. And even mitigating that, 
most of the civilians that die off camera are just kind of dying to the bullshit mechanics of the game and not being actually killed by chrysalids. Yeah, we saw one die where a five appeared out of nowhere. That was one getting shot. Yeah. I mean, that one actually had an excuse, though, a floater shot. Civilians will yeah. just kind of die off camera if you're not even looking at them. Um, I don't know if you've experienced this, but I've had mimetic skin uh, people scouting and being near civilians, and they just keel over and die despite any lack of uh, alien intervention. I've never seen that, though. No. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a sloppy mechanism to determine, you know, soldiers dying to things you haven't found yet, but it's every, like every time you end your turn, a civilian has a chance of just dying from, I don't know, fear. But it's, it's definitely a different thing on Impossible when there's chrysalids and zombies coming at you constantly, and it's just DPS. You can't do enough damage fast enough to stop the waves. Mm. The good news about zombies, despite having more health, is that they're not hardened. They can be critical hit, and they're also very slow. Just, yeah, they, they look, like, kind of weak, but don't let them get anywhere, anywhere near you guys. They hit like a truck. Yeah, they melee for, like, about ten, I want to say. They, they melee for a lot. Assaults doing what assaults do best. Right, shooting things close range. Should probably reload that guy. Probably should, yeah. There you, there you go. Yeah. Well, last turn he had a rocket. That's affirmative. I'm feeling kind of lucky that the, uh, the group of floaters uh, that are presumably in this direction didn't engage me while the chrysalids were there as well. Although one did yeah. launch, but it was a turn too late to really make that bad. Well, they were going after civilians up there. I suppose, but they've only killed four. Yeah, that seems a little low. As I said, I'm not entirely sure how the whole civilian dying as you're doing shit works. It really doesn't feel like the aliens are actually directly responsible. It feels kind of like they just die over time. Ooh, good shot. Yeah. I was hoping that floater would just carry oh, really? all its momentum. Yes. You got a lucky map there. You know that uh, map that's just like rows of tanks? Yes. Yeah, there's you start behind a wall, and then there's just rows of tanks. That one is the worst for terror missions. Really? Oh god, because those tanks can blow up. The, seriously? That you use for cover, yes. Like, we're, very, we're talking military bad. tanks, like, on treads yes. with a cannon. Yes. I didn't know those could blow up. Oh god, yes. Oh, wow. I had an Iron Man run that uh, did not end well because of that. Hmm. Usually that map doesn't pose much trouble to me, it's just a very slow one that means I don't rescue 14 off. survivors. Work, Commander. Yeah. So, the game decided to nickname Cat uh, Sprawl Septic, which is, like, really? What the hell? So, we already went over this, that's Sprinter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the actual choice is going to be for Sprawl between... Uh, what is no, it? it's Lightning. Urban. No, it's, it's Urban. Urban Sprawl. Oh, her nickname is yeah. Urban, yeah. Between so, right Lightning Reflexes yeah. is awesome. Yep. Fantastic. Uh, and they changed Close and Personal uh, for Enemy Within. It's so good, too. It is. It, it, close and Personal used to be kind of crappy. It was, what, like, crit chance based on proximity to enemy? Yeah. And now it's just free shot if you're close. Lightning Reflexes is so great, though, just to dodge that first shot. It opens up so many more opportunities of, of and tactics and things. It does. I mean, it's one of those choices I wish I could have both clearly. Yeah. But given the choice between the two, it, it comes out to be lightning reflexes. Yeah. James Dean getting his bullet swarm. One mission too late for me to screw up with. <laughs> uh, Fionoid posted that he wanted uh, a little bit more subtitles for the plot or something. Uh, most of the plot's in the cutscenes anyway, but I'm going to uh, dick around the base just to get a little bit of we the, uh, the Fallen touch, and uh, Shen experience. Just I'm so sure you can listen to them. Be eager to get out there and even up the body count. It's fun to stay on this screen for a while and just listen. hear some random things yeah. coming. Ooh, no, no panic. I see. Yeah, I good. completely wiped out all the panic in Asia with my awesome terror mission. Our worst suspicions may have been true after all. They're not just here for abductions. They have something else in mind. I just don't understand. Why use such advanced technology against innocent civilians? There's a bit of the uh, character development, I guess, for lack of a better term, that Shen and Volan will always have something to say after 
specific events in the game, uh, either new enemy types or new events, and they kind of, I don't know, exposition the plot along, or just, you know, give a character feel to it. Most of that's going to be lost in the LP, simply because I'm not going to be recording my base constantly as I, I click around research projects, but this was an easy time right after the first terror mission. You know they have something to say about that. At some point you should zoom in on the uh, little pods and see the people walking around in them. Oh yeah, sure. I'll try to That's get that done. That's always a fun thing to do. Next video. Yeah. Uh, also, briefly, uh, if we were paying attention, my engineer count something like 28 and my scientist count is like 8 and that is just killing me how slow it takes to research anything. After the arc thrower, I think I only have uh, like beam weapons and alien alloys left and each of those are going to take like 20 days. Just brutal. Well, it'll get better. It will. Well, so that was our uh, that was our first terror mission. It actually went surprisingly well. Too well. <laughs> you just want more death. I know. More death. Right. More zombies. Thanks. So I've been Jade Star. Go off a moment. And uh, join us next time.